Hello, everyone. How are you doing? And welcome to another episode of the Dr. Will Show, where we have the discussions that inform, entertain, and empower educators to be the change. I'm your host, Dr. Will. And today I am here with Katie Lynch. How are you doing, Katie? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And happy Friday uh, to you as well. Uh, I am actually on the eve of Model Schools Conference where I'll be going to uh, present. Uh, so a little nervous. Oh. Uh, a little <laughs> nervous about that. Uh, so pe those who are watching, we are here and we'll be talking about uh, Codeverse. Now, uh, Katie and Codeverse uh, jumped on my radar from LinkedIn. So I kept seeing uh, stuff pop up into my uh, timeline or feed on LinkedIn and I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. And then I'm reading more, reading more. And then when I saw your mission, I was like, okay, this is, uh, that's not just a mission right there. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's like someone, you know, you're trying to chop a mountain down right there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, being that, you know, my shows are, uh, mostly focused on, uh, educators making that transition uh, and using digital to be transformational. I said, well, this is right up my alley. So I reached out to you and thankfully you agreed to be on the show. Uh, so for those who are watching, will you please introduce yourself? Yes. So I am Katie Lynch and I am the co-founder and CMO of Codeverse. Uh, which is the world's first fully interactive coding school and educational tech platform for kids. Awesome, awesome. Is that an Irish accent I hear? It's Scottish, close. <laughs> but yeah, I'm from, Scottish... from Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks again for being a guest on the show. Uh, what drew you? to a career within the technology space? And why is learning how to code such an imperative in this day and age? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, so as I said before, I was, I was born in Scotland, raised in Scotland, and have always been quite fascinated by technology. Um, my dad traveled a lot for his job. So when I was young, uh, he would bring home all sorts of tech gadgets and games and whatnot from different countries and um truth be told i just i was always fascinated by just what those gadgets were you know how they were made um sometimes i would pick them apart to see what like the insides would look like and um it's funny because i genuinely never thought that i would end up in tech uh i kind of fell into it and so how that happened was I moved to Chicago on my own about 10 years ago. And when I first came here, uh, I applied for a position with Facebook's largest travel application. It was a company called Where I've Been. And so my role at that business uh, was to single-handedly manage all of their marketing efforts. And so, uh, you know, really, really fell into tech um, and kind of got involved with the tech community by working for that startup. Uh, and then just really um, grew my passion from there. Awesome, awesome. So you are the co-founder of Codeverse. Mm -hmm. What is Codeverse and what is that huge mi mission I mentioned earlier? <laughs> yes, so our mission is to teach a billion kids how to code. Uh, and I understand that that's a lot, right? And will probably take the next 20, 30 years for us to be able to achieve that goal. The way that I look at it, though, is I Codeverse is the third business now that I'm running. I sold my first business uh, and then I became the CEO of Tech Week and ran that company for a while. And so, you know, the way that I look at Codeverse is it really is mine and Craig. Um, it's mine and Craig Elliott's legacy company. So we really do see ourselves working on this for, again, the next 20, 30 years. As far as what Codeverse actually is, so we are basically building beautiful, modern, um, interactive schools for children between six and 12 years old. So within these spaces, and we're starting in Chicago, within these spaces, kids can not only learn how to build apps and games, 
but they can also learn how to program any tech gadget that we feature within the studio. So whether that's a robot arm or a drone or a 3D printer, disco balls, fog machines, you name it, any single gadget can be programmed by the children. Awesome, awesome. So when a student walks into Coverse, mm. what is their experience like? <laughs> it's awesome, and I wish I had this when I was a kid. So when a child walks in, uh, they check in, and they receive an iPad with their name that lights up on it. And with that iPad, children have three options. They can either A, uh, learn how to code, so they're taken through dozens upon dozens of different pieces of content, which are essentially lessons that teach kids all about if statements and variables and all sorts of different uh, concepts in coding. So that's uh, the first, I guess, mode. The second mode is build. So if I'm uh, a seven-year-old girl and I say, okay, I feel like I understand the basics of coding now because I've gone through many of the lessons, now I want to build my own game. So maybe I want to build my own version of Tetris or Super Mario Brothers. So I can essentially do that uh, through build mode. And the great thing about the build mode is that on the back end of our platform, we give children all the tools and resources that they need to be able to build really whatever they want to build. The third mode uh, within our platform is being able to program any object within the studio. So again, if I'm seven-year-old girl and I'm in the studio and I say, okay, today I want to play Beyonce on the speakers and I want to change the lights from white to yellow, Basically, Codeverse equips me with all of the different tools that I need to be able to code or program any of those gadgets. Hmm. So, in doing my research uh, for this interview, uh, I noticed that you developed your own coding language called KidScript. Yes. Uh, how is KidScript different from Scratch or Swift Playground? Excellent question. So, as you know, there are dozens upon dozens of different languages that exist out there today, right? There's JavaScript, there's Ruby, there's Python, Visual Basic. But the truth is, is that many of these languages are just too complex for a six-year-old or a seven-year-old or a 12-year-old. Um, even me, like a 32-year-old, 30, a if I was learning to code for the first time, it's just quite complex. And so what we've done is we have taken the core concepts of those popular languages, like if statements, like I mentioned before, or variables or loops, and we have created a very kid-friendly syntax around those concepts. So it's super easy for kids to understand because it's a very simplified language. The, the key differentiator here is that KidScript is essentially a gateway for children to learn these other languages. So if I master KidScript and I'm building apps and games and all these great projects, it's very easy for me then to go and learn Python or JavaScript. Um, another big differentiator for us is KidScript is a very hands-on language. So as children are typing code within our platform, they're able to see the results of their code in real time on the right hand side of the screen and then if a child wants to drag objects around the screen on the right hand side they are able to see their code update in real time on the left hand side of the screen um, which is very different from what any other um, kids programming language offers today wow yeah <laughs> that is nice that is nice thank you uh because we Took some students uh, to the University of Southern Mississippi. They had an ID8 hackathon uh, for the first time for girls. And we went there and we had computer scientists there working. And, you know, when we went into the code where you did, you, you mentioned the if and uh, uh, or if then statements where the students had to go in and type this. OK, yes. all, right, all right. I'm saying now I go here to run it to see, OK, did I do this correctly? Uh, that would have been awesome to be able to see, okay, this <laughs> stuff running, you know, right here in real time. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's, like, oh. you know, for a child, it just, it keeps them engaged and it's, it's instantly gratifying, right? Like if you're a child or even if you're an adult and you are, you know, typing something on your screen and you want to make something work, again, it's very instantly gratifying to see those changes happen in front of you in real time. So again, it keeps the kids excited, it keeps them engaged, it keeps them, um, you know, excited and, and again, energetic and happy uh, because again, they can, they can see exactly what it is that they're building uh, in real time using this language. Okay, so when a parent wants to sign up their child or children uh, I, I, you mentioned earlier about the robots and other things of that nature. Uh, what sort of other things, first, you know, actually, you know, offer uh, to those children? Yeah. So, and my thought on this is that coding teaches children skills that go beyond technical skills, right? I mean, at its very core. Code versus teaching children how to build apps and how to build games, but it's really teaching children a multitude of other life skills that I believe kids really need to prepare them for success in the future. So what does that mean? What, what does coding actually do? I mean, it is teaching kids how to be collaborative, right, with other children and work with other children on projects. So it teaches them about teamwork. It teaches them about problem solving skills and critical thinking and computational thinking. So how, how again, as you said before with the if and and statements, like if you do X, then it results in Y. So that's incredibly important. It teaches children how to be creative. It teaches them how to be independent. So it teaches them again, all of these different skills um, that go beyond just the skill of learning how to actually code and how technology works. Awesome. Awesome. So now I want to throw this out there to you. Uh, we hear a lot uh, in the tech world about the lack of diversity and they say there there's a, a pipeline issue uh, that's happening. Uh, where do you see Codeverse yes. actually uh, feeding that pipeline and sort of working with diverse communities to get them on board? Yeah, so excellent question. So it's interesting because there are so many people and, and so many organizations that come up to me today that want to get kids excited about STEM or STEAM uh, and computer science at that high school, college, adult level. But in our opinion, uh, that's almost too late for kids to, for, um, for individuals to learn how to code. Like I genuinely believe that the best time to get, uh, you know, an individual excited about these topics is when they are very young. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, children absorb information in a very different way than adults do, right? It's, it's the reason why parents want their children to learn a foreign language like Spanish or French or German or Italian at such a young age because it's easier for them to learn um, those languages. Again, children just absorb information just very differently. Um, as far as diversity, I do believe that is incredibly important. And right now, Codeverse is working with a number of different organizations, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Chicago being one of them, to bring uh, more children from especially underrepresented uh, communities into, into the fold. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I want to ask you, uh, so what's next for Codeverse? Yeah. Codeverse? And where do you see Codeverse being accessible to students here in Mississippi? Yes. So we are, as I mentioned before, uh, we are launching the first Codeverse studio in Lincoln Park uh, in July in Chicago. And the goal is over the next 18 months to open three additional locations in Illinois. And then over the next five years, uh, we plan on launching multiple locations across the U.S. in major metropolitan cities, as well as launch SAS. And so to answer your question about Mississippi, uh, 
I mean, A, we may open brick and mortars, we may open studios there, but I think the, the greater opportunity is children having access to kid script in the comfort of their own homes or within schools. So I see us partnering with, you know, schools and nonprofits and other big organizations to bring uh, Codeverse to life, whether it's in Mississippi or Connecticut or Florida um, or even internationally. Awesome. Awesome. So this is I've been some great information and I'm I wish we had one here, uh, <laughs> you know, so that Me we, can, you know, take our students uh, there uh, because we really have some uh, untapped talent here. And I wish that our state representatives really felt that way instead of bringing in, you know, traditional companies that don't stay here for long, you know, right. putting out that fiber across the state to encourage uh you know people to build tech companies here because you wouldn't believe how cheap rent and mortgage is around here uh, oh, so i'm it, sure it, so it's very advantageous i think uh for tech companies to start up here uh but before we go what is your advice uh to parents yes to who are they're 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 now they're looking at their child's future as, yes. as they all do, and they're looking at the uh, landscape of the economy. Yeah, be created with jobs be outsourced, and mm -hmm. and they're kind of seeing how can I steer my child in a certain way or provide them certain educational opportunities to give them a leg up. Uh, how wh where do they start? I guess the process of the looking in uh, right. to coding and the possibility of that may becoming a career path for their child. Right. I think to take a step backwards, it's important to for parents to understand why coding is important. And you touched upon something where you said, you know, jobs and the economy and kind of the 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 direction that I guess the world is going in. And it's interesting because now we live in the digital age, right? Kids are growing up with technology in their hands by the age of, you know, two and three years old, which is great. You know, that's certainly not the world that you grew up in. It's certainly not the world that I grew up in. You know, I didn't get my first computer until I was about 15, 16 years old. I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 17. And so, children, though, again, are just growing up in this age where technology is everywhere. And the reality of that is that technology is disrupting every single industry. It's disrupting healthcare, it's disrupt disrupting um, the finance industry, fashion, music, entertainment, education. I mean, you name it, tech is everywhere. And so it's really important, first and foremost, for parents to understand that coding is so important because it does equip kids with those technical skills that they are going to need in the future, whether a child becomes a um, engineer or not. You know, your child could end up becoming an artist or a musician or a fashion designer, but it is still, coding is still a huge asset to have in this day and age. So I think that's, that's the, the, the first important thing to understand. The second important thing to understand touches upon what I said before, which is it is so important to get children excited about coding now. And so if you are listening uh, to the show and you have a child, let's just say it's a, a child that's between the ages of like two and five, I would highly recommend doing some research into different toys and games and apps out there that you can just introduce the foundations of coding uh, to your kid, right? Whether it's like a, a robot that moves in a repeatable way, or it's an app that you've downloaded on your iPad that your kid can, can play with, just to introduce those very basic concepts. And then I would say the final step is, you know, for children that are like six or seven years old and older, I would be enrolling them in summer camps or classes that really teaches them the, the basics of coding. Because again, as, as I mentioned before, the skills that children learn 
uh, go way beyond. I mean, the technical skills are incredibly important, but the other skills that children learn um, helps develop them as individuals. Awesome, awesome. Thank you again, Katie, for being a guest on the show. People, you know, this is going up on my blog. I'm going to put this on LinkedIn, put it out on Twitter. Uh, it's going to be on Facebook today. And so I'll be tweeting that out as well. Uh, there will be information there to be able to, to learn more about Cold First and uh, be able to follow Katie on uh, Twitter as well. So people, again, watch the show. Check it out. Learn about Coverse. Learn the importance of coding. Thank you again, Katie, for being a guest on the show. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. As always, people, invest in you. ADU. Peace.